Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. This is part six of six of our video series on the story of everything. We believe that the Bible is one continuous story about God's hope and God's redemption of the world. And so we wanna make these six videos to help you understand that story so that as you read the Bible, you can have confidence to know the story as you read. Revelation, it's one of the most confusing books, I think, as people read it, and it's the end of the story. So what we have looked at so far is God created the world, this fall where mankind sinned and rebelled against God, and then kind of the promise of a savior. We looked at Jesus being that savior, then the church which Jesus established, and now we look forward to the future and what is going to happen at the end of the world. So um, a lot of people are really confused about Revelation and when they read it, it's very like overwhelming because there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on in there. But in your teaching on Revelation, you talked about the fact that when we understand God's character, we can understand a little bit about the book of Revelation based on that. Yeah, I, t I started the teaching talking about the two sides of God. Now you actually use a little prop to use to describe it. We're, the one side of God is his love, mm -hmm. his mercy, his grace, and that's what we always focus so much of our teaching on. But then I flipped it over and I said, there's also the justice of God, that he is a judge. And as a result, there's a wrath of God, which is the penalty that's poured out for injustices done. And for us as Christ followers, I thank God that his wrath was poured out on Christ mm -hmm. for our behalf. But for those who have not accepted Christ, there's still a coming wrath come. And that is a lot of what's in that book, Revelation. It's the wrath of God being poured out on a Christ-rejecting earth. There's three parts to Revelation. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about kind of the structure and the organization of it. Yeah, I, I just want to read this one verse, uh, Revelation 1.19. It's, it's like an outline mm -hmm. in this book that describes the three parts. It says in that verse, Write, therefore, what you have seen, so that's the first part, what is now, so that's the present, and what will take place later. And this is the words of, of Jesus to the Apostle John, who was penning that book. And chapter 1 is really the what has been. It's the revelation of Jesus. And sometimes when people think of revelation, they think of end-time revelation. The revelation is of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Chapter one is a description of Jesus. Then chapter two and three is the present. That's the church age. That's a, a message of Jesus to seven different churches that we could find on the earth today. Things like the persecuted church and the, the, the compromising church and so forth is all there. And then from chapter four on is futuristic. Okay. And what we would believe is those verses have not, if you're looking at the chronological side of they have not taken place yet. Okay. That's where we see a picture of the rapture, of the tribulation, of Christ's return, that battle of Armageddon, and a new heaven and a new earth. And let's talk just a little bit more about the idea that the tribulation is God really pouring out his wrath or his judgment. Yeah. Well, you can just see it. You can see, for example, in chapters 1 through 3, you see the church mentioned often. But once you get into chapter 4, you don't see the church, the word church mentioned. And it's because we don't believe the church is there. We believe that after the rapture, the people who are left are the people who have not accepted Christ. And that this wrath being poured out is not just punishment. That yes, God is a judge, but even in his judgment, he's trying to draw men and women to himself. Mm. The Old Testament calls this tribulation the time of Jacob's trouble. And it uses Jacob, who was a patriarch of the, the nation of, of Israel. And we believe that the tribulation is really God trying to reach the Jewish people. Hmm. That's where the greatest revival of, is going to happen for the Jewish peoples in the tribulation. There's going to be evangelists on the earth that are going to be Jewish people. The Bible talks about 144,000. And so it's not just a time of, of judgment in the sense of wrath but it's also a time of Christ really trying to reach more and more people before he does come back once and for all. 
Talk a little bit about the last two chapters, which really describe heaven. And really yeah. what I love about the last two chapters is that, uh, you know, a lot of times when we see comics or cartoons about heaven, it's us sitting on a cloud yeah. with, you know, playing a harp. And when we really see a picture of the new heavens and the new earth and Revelations chapters 21 and 22, it's it's anything but that. When you study chapters 21 and 22, it's a picture of heaven, a new heaven, a new earth. And that new earth is like a picture of the Garden of Eden coming back. There's another tree of life, yeah. like there was in the Garden of Eden. Now there's a tree of life that would give health to the nations, it says, that there would be a different fruit each month, that mm. as people are there, there's no sin, there's no suffering, there's no evil on the earth. And it does say that we will rule and reign with Christ. So there's a responsibility that God's going to have for us. I think the more faithful we are here, during this time, the more responsibility he's going to give to us yeah. in heaven. As, as we wrap up kind of this uh, series, really, um, give us just a little hope, uh, especially from the idea of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and just the idea that we as Christians aren't going to have to experience the wrath of God. Yeah, there's a couple places in Scripture that talk about this rapture, and it doesn't use the word rapture because it's, that's a Latin word, that comes from the Greek word harpazo, which is a snatching away quickly, uh, but or being caught up. But the the picture of the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks about those who remain here on the earth being caught up to meet those who have already previously died to meet the Lord in the air. And then it tells us to encourage one another with these words. The very last verse of chapter 4. And you think about that. If we are to encourage one another with these words, that shows me we're not going to have to go through this tribulation. Well, thanks so much, Pastor Dave, not only for giving us an outline for Revelation, but also giving us some perspective and some application just with the, our own urgency, our own desire for our lost friends and family to not have to experience the tribulation, um, just for thinking about storing up treasure in heaven. So, yeah. so appreciate you and just your wisdom and uh, even just the ability to organize and give us sort of an outline and a framework as we read this book. Thanks, Brian. It's been a great honor. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for checking out this six-part series. Once again, the Bible is one story of God's hope and God's love and God's redemption. And we hope that this series has been helpful to you as you read the Bible. We hope it's given you a lot more clarity and a lot more of an ability to read and to understand what's going on. If this has been helpful to you, please share it with someone. Share it on your social media, text it to a friend, do whatever you gotta do to get the word out and spread the word about God's story. We hope that you have an amazing journey of reading the Bible. Happy reading, we love you.